So yesterday we discussed that Google announced Gemini 1.5 Pro and all the improvements that it planned to bring along with the new GPT Turbo. But along with Gemini 1.5 Pro, that was the main headline, but they had an event um, where they did a presentation and they discussed a lot of new things they were going to be bringing. And one of those things, the most notable of which, was AI agents. Google is trying to branch out into this agents world and they think they can make serious money off of it. There's a lot to talk about here, so let's unpack this. So in this presentation, they talk about six different types of agents which they're going to be releasing. First of all, this is the most obvious one. I'm sure you could have guessed this was coming as far as agents are concerned. It's a customer agent, right? Everyone knows what a customer agent does and why we need them. When customers need assistance and they need to talk to someone, whether that be about a product they already have or inquiring about a product that they might want to get in the future, they need someone on the other end to walk them through it and discuss it and help them out. Usually we have humans for that and for the lighter tasks like stuff that isn't so complicated, commonly asked questions, we have a low level coded agent, right? Like a robot and it sort of just tries to figure out what you're asking and if you have too much trouble, they'll usually say, oh hey, you can open up a live chat with one of our human agents or you have to ring us on the phone, which annoying as it is, it's fair enough. I'm sure they get asked the same questions a million times. And they did actually give another example for this type of agent. A good example could be Mercedes-Benz building a customer agent for their in-car experiences. Let's say you're in your new Mercedes, you're driving down the road and you wanna reroute, right? So rather than typing the thing in because then you're gonna crash, you can just hit the, the button. I mean, we sort of already have this, right? Like the voice recognition, but it's totally awful. I don't know if, about whatever cars you guys have driven but in my experience, it's awful. You hit the button and you say, I want to change the route from A to B. Can you find me the quickest way? And then it does it just like that. That's what they want it. They want it to be seamless and they don't want people to have trouble with it like we sort of do now. Next up, we have the employee agents, which are there to help employees to be more productive. So the example that they gave for this one is like a healthcare situation. And this agent can summarize patient info. So if you're a doctor and you want to see anything that's relevant, a patient's got a whole file. If you don't want to read through the whole thing, you ask this agent, what could be relevant to this issue that they have now? Summarize it for me and then they can draw their conclusions. So it's there as a helping hand. Creative agents, they're there to help you and assist you in anything that might be creative works. For an example, let's say you've been hired to make an advert for Instagram and you don't even know where to start. You type this into this agent, bang, get some ideas out of it. It can give you some examples and then you've at least got a rough place to start off from and you can alter your designs and ideas based on what um, sort of starting points is provided you. Data agents, big one here for the tech world. And the purpose of these is to sort of do the job of anyone who analyzes data. Now, I do think as far as these agents go, this one is probably most likely to get out of the door first and put into businesses because data is just clumps of information, making people deal with it. It annoys them, gives them a job, but it's money out of the business owner's bank account. We have coding agents, and I'm sure you can all see where this is going. They are there to assist developers um, on making applications, and we all know where assist leads. Soon they'll be doing it themselves. But for now, it's just assist. And one of their main selling points here is obviously this is powered by Gemini 1.5 Pro and they have a 1 million token context window. So even if you've got some massive project you're working on, Gemini can help you. This agent should be able to help you code it. And then finally, they have security agents. And these ones, as the name may suggest, are based around security and they'll work to assist security operations. So summarize things that they might find and analyze things that may potentially be malware in systems. So yesterday we also talked about the new GPT-4 Turbo that just came out. And since that video, people have continued running tests on it and there's some news to talk about there. So there's this test called the GPQA and the purpose of it is essentially to be a Google proof test. The information online says 448 multiple choice questions written by experts in biology, physics and chemistry. So these questions are at an extreme difficulty and you can't solve them just by Googling. You need to have the knowledge in your brain or I guess if you're an AI in your data set. But after running the test, these are the results that GPT-4 Turbo gave us. 
scoring a 46%. It looks like the old GPT was at around 43%. So 3% increase, let's call it. However, it is important to note that even this GPT-4 Turbo model that has released does still lag behind Claude 3 Opus, which is the best model at the moment. And then last of all for today, Texas is replacing thousands of human exam graders with AI tools. So the Texas Education Agency is going to grade open-ended questions with AI tools. Open-ended questions, that just means, so stuff like English questions, not maths, because maths is a clear answer every time maths will lead you there. They say that the agency is expecting the system to save 15 to $20 million per year. What do you think that money comes from? It comes out of the teacher's pockets. Anyone marking these tests or who would be marking these tests is important to note that there are some safety nets that will be implemented as this is still a new tool that they're trying out. Now these tests are being graded by chatbot systems similar to that of ChatGPT, might even be ChatGPT, we don't know for sure, but large language models are the ones that they're using. Don't know about you guys, but that's pretty scary stuff. We're watching it take jobs real time, even if it just starts small. What do you guys think it's gonna take next? But that's all for today. Do like if you did enjoy, because it really helps me in the algorithm, and thanks for watching.